I'm Dr. Gene Antonucci. I started my career in dentistry in the Air Force, where I helped our military personnel get healthy and stay healthy. From there, I built a successful practice in Huntington, New York, and later as a teacher, lecturer, and author, I shared my knowledge and experience with students and fellow healthcare professionals. And now my journey's taken me here to explore the world of health, wellness, diet, fitness, and nutrition, as together we discover and find the good life. Fresh air. What is it about fresh air that invigorates us and makes us feel so good? Helen Keller, who relied on her senses of touch and smell, once said, I could never stay long enough on the shore. The tang of the untainted, fresh and greasy air was like a cool, quieting thought. Standing on the shore, deprived of sight and hearing, she was invigorated by the smell and sensations that washed over her. So what is it about fresh air that has this effect on all of us? This isn't just emotional or philosophical. Our genes cry out saying something damn good is happening here. Hormones are released, pathways are open because our bodies know and our bodies respond when the air is dirty. Unfortunately, most of the air we breathe isn't clean. Most of us don't realize the most danger we face is from impure air inside of our own homes. Our air conditioning and heating systems basically just recirculate stale air that's filled with chemicals, odors, pollen, dust, insect parts, mold, pet hair, bacteria, virus, and all other disgusting particles that irritate our lungs and make us sick. So today's show, we're going to focus on clean air, what it means at home, at work, and for our health. My first guest is Dr. Jagdish Kubjandani. Dr. Kubjandani is a professor of health sciences and a statistician at Ball State University in Indiana. He's co-authored more than 150 research articles with an emphasis on global health and social epidemiology. Dr. Kupchandani, it's my honor to have you on the show with me today. I hope you're safe and well during these crazy, unprecedented times. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and I wish you the same. I'd like to spend this time together gaining an understanding of the importance of clean air for our health and well-being. And so for the moment, let's put aside talk of COVID-19 and viruses aside. I'd like to begin um, having you speak to us as if we don't know a thing about the subject of air purification and clean air. Okay. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm glad we talk about air quality. Uh, maybe we should um, start looking at indoor environment. Uh, as a broader term, so it would include uh, air, uh, germs, uh, physical structures, smells, uh, temperature, humidity, uh, because you know uh, air quality itself does not exist alone. It depends on a number of factors. So earlier we used to look at you know chemicals and pollutants, but now uh, the term has become broader. So it does include a variety of things that surround us. So right now, in my case, I have some light air, humidity. Um, there's some structures lying around. Then I have sanitizers, um, you know, a wall plug-in for perfume, and all those constitute uh, indoor environment. And they have a profound impact, impact on what we are breathing, how we are breathing, and the quality of life that we live. So what would you define as unclean air? Unclean air first, you know, there's uh, the natural composition of our air around us that's planet-wide, so it has nitrogen, oxygen to a certain extent. And over the period of years in this century, we have seen a lot more industrialization. So now we are looking at new chemicals in the air beyond oxygen, nitrogen. So the national uh, air quality standards monitor ozone, particles, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen, nitrogen oxide, and those are being monitored because they have specific human health effects. Um, like cancers, breathing difficulty, headaches. So, you know, those have to be monitored and brought back to a level where they don't damage health. Uh, and that's how we continue to look at air quality. And then we also look at indoor air quality in terms of, you know, what's the temperature of the air? Uh, what humidity are we surviving on? Um, mostly because now all of us are indoors. We have to look at, you know, are we breathing the same air again and again, which has the home perfume, home sanitizer particles, and then unvented stove cooking particles. And those all constitute our air quality. So do, do cooking particles, for example, um, the odors from them and the particulates in them, are, are they potentially harmful to people? 
not in the short term in the short term so you know again with air quality the effects can be defined as short term and long term in the short term if you breathe the same air after cooking using the hand sanitizer or have pets at home and you're breathing the same air again and again short term effect is headache uh, irritation uh, burning of eyes breathing difficulty in the long term uh, people may end up having severe respiratory diseases cancers heart disease Dr. Kupchadani, I have more to ask you, but can you stay with us throughout the break? Yeah, um, for sure. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Over 70 years of experience in heart and aviation, the members of the Association of Flight Attendants know the realities of the aircraft cabin better than anyone. We don't just serve drinks, we save lives. We don't just negotiate contracts, we move major policy issues like the smoking ban, no knives on planes, clean water and safe food on board. The air we breathe matters and we stop the spraying of poisonous pesticides. The Association of Flight Attendants, stronger together, better together. We're back now with Dr. Jagdish Kupchandani, professor of health science and a statistician at Ball State University in Indiana. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for having me. Is there a difference between healthy air outdoors and healthy air in the workplace, school, and home? Yes, um, you know, outdoors there's clear classification. We look at oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, ozone. And there's a limit to what is being monitored, what is being evaluated. And it's generally much healthier now because we are indoors and most people... Uh, so then I guess there are differences then between the, to the, the impurities that would be in a home versus a work environment or school, depending on uh, what you're producing at the workplace or, or what's going on at the school, right? right? Yes, and you know, despite the overlap between outdoor and indoor, indoor climates have far more threats. Uh, more so because we are locked down now. Uh, average American home is more than 10 years old. Also because an average American spends eight hours wow. indoors in their work time. And generally we don't keep those in view when we talk of air quality. So indoor air climate in my view is far more complicated. Wow, this is great information. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. You've been a wealth of information. We'll be right back. <laughs>